there. It's Sandy Alnock coming to you very late from the studio. I have been painting, but not painting on paper. I've been painting on my shirt. I am a terrible painter. I'm just going to tell you that right off the bat. More on that story coming up on Saturday. Because for right now, I want to talk about mermaid. Yes, mermaid. Get it? Mermaids in mermaid. I have been wanting to participate in mermaid for years now. And I usually remember that mermaid was in May when it's June. And that doesn't really do any good, does it? So this year I'm squeezing my mermaids in just under the wire as we hit the end of the month. So I have three mermaid drawings that I have done during my momentary breaks from this crazy adventure that I have been doing in my house. And these are available for you to purchase if you would like to color them. More information as we go through this video, but I just wanted to tell you about them while it's still May. So let's get going. My first mermaid is coral themed and each one of these does have a theme to it. I have ideas for more of them. So if you guys like these, let me know because I might be able to do some more. What I did with each one was to draw them first on drawing paper and unfortunately found that it scanned poorly. So I had to trace it onto some better paper as well as do it in pen and ink. So I'm using Hanamula's lettering paper, which is smooth as silk for any kind of pen and ink drawing. And I'm using Copic Multiliners in a 0.7 and a 0.2 so that I can get varied lines. And I wanted the outside lines to be bold enough that if you reduce this down to put it on a card that the lines will still show. Some of the very, very, very small details might get a little tiny and squished up. But you may want to make yourself a reasonably sized card because there is a heck of a lot of detail in these. This one has the most open areas and the most large shapes out of all three. So if you're the kind of person who has trouble with itty bitty images, then this might be the perfect one for you because it's got bigger shapes than the other two mermaids. And as you can see, I'm just having fun adding little details to these and trying to do these in my style, just rendering them the way that I love to draw. And that meant a whole lot of lines and made it a whole lot of fun to do. The second one is Jellyfish Mermaid. And for this one, as you can see here, she has a swishy tail and I really wanted to do the swishy tail. You may know that I love making these kinds of lines, just very swoopy sorts of lines. And I wanted it to feel almost like, I don't know, like hair or like a betta fish or I don't know, maybe an evening gown. If you were to color this one up, I would even suggest after you get it all finished, get some nice rich color in there and then add sparkles using a gel pen, like a white gel pen of some kind, or even like gold or silver gel pen. Just make some something that looks very sparkly because she's quite elegant and she's got jellyfish for her little friend. And again, I've got the two sizes of pens. So you can kind of see the difference between the line weights, which gives more flow to the drawing. Last but not least, the kelp mermaid. Her hair is made of kelp, which was so much fun to draw. I'll show you in a second how you make one of those pieces of kelp. Super easy. But her outfit was really fun. The outside portion of it, I drew as netting. So it's like fishnet on top of her skin tone, whatever color you make her. And then the center portion is all scales. I want to mention something about her arm. Her hand is underneath her hair, kind of flipping up her kelpie hair. That's her elbow sticking out towards you. It looked a lot better in my life drawing group because that was the position the model had her arm in. It looks a little weird in pen and ink. I realize that. Go to the product page and you'll see a colored version of this and you'll be able to tell a little bit better how this works out in real life when you start coloring. So here's how you make the kelp. Just make a swirly line, just a squiggly line, and then make another beside it, but crisscross it a couple times and do that in a thicker pen. And then I took a thinner pen to go down the center and make a line that doesn't have to be down the middle, but just adds a little bit of texture to it. And I did that for her entire hair. 
So that was a whole lot of fun. And then she has a little otter buddy, sea otter. If you would like to know what colors a sea otter is, go look on the web. There are tons of sea otter pictures out there. If you make a dark sea otter, because when they are especially really wet, they get very dark, then you might need to use a white gel pen to draw in your own whiskers. But I drew them in here anyway, just to remind you that sea otters have big old whiskers. And he's got his little paws up and he's being held in her arm. That's her hand underneath, underneath him. It's holding him up. And they're just in love. That little otter just thinks the world of his mermaid buddy. The links are in the doobly-doo down below. So if you just like one of the images, you can get it by itself. Or you get a little discount if you buy the set with all three of them in it. And once you purchase them, then they will be available for instant download. And you can just print them on whatever paper you like best for whatever medium you like to use. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I am sorry about my unprofessional appearance. I will tell you more about that in the next video on Saturday. So please come back and join me. Subscribe if you have not, so you don't miss a thing. And I'll see you then. Take care and have a great week. Bye.